future trends, deep insights, industry leaders. This is the iGaming Next podcast with your host, Pierre Lint. This podcast is brought to you by Pragmatic Solutions, the leading iGaming PAM platform with a modular approach, including many benefits like a fast, secure, and scalable API-based platform integrated with all major third-party products and services. Make sure you head over to Pragmatic Solutions and join our smart thinking. First of all, Pontus, how good does it feel to be Pontus Lindvall after coming back from the dead last year and delivering the best quarterly report that Betson had ever seen uh, the other week? That was fantastic. <laughs> that, that was a great report and uh, uh, w- with a kind of a different situation that we have in, in the whole society, it, it, it was great to deliver such a good report. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I've been following the development from a lot of other uh, Agami operators when they are reporting their, their numbers. And um, seemingly from the operators that are reporting a bit more disappointing numbers, they tend to put part of the blame to uh, the kind of macroeconomic climate that uh, inflation is, uh, uh, is kind of limiting the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the um, uh, customer's uh, ability to spend and so on and so forth. Is that something that uh, you have noticed so far in the um, uh, in the way your customers interact with uh, with Betson and the spending habits, uh, or is this something that you haven't noticed yet? We haven't noticed anything like that yet. <laughs> uh, of course, when we went into this uh, new trend, uh, we were quite uh, we didn't know what should happen because every recession or every hard time is different from each other. And this is a new one with higher capital costs and potential inflation and things like that. So we didn't know how the customers should react, but uh, we haven't seen any bad trends so far. Would you go so far as saying that the agami industry is uh, recession proof? I wouldn't say that as a <laughs> you know fixture that, that it is like that, but I, I think uh, I usually discuss like this that you know when things get tougher people tend to cut down on certain things they don't renovate the kitchen they don't buy a new sailing boat or a car uh, but they keep on on the daily consumption of milk and yogurt and you know uh, maybe some gaming five euros a day something yeah. like that so we go into that cost bracket we're, we're not uh, it's not an expensive uh, entertainment form so so i, th- I think we will uh, we are one of the last things that you want to sacrifice i believe yeah exactly my my girlfriend i taught her how to uh, trade uh, money on the stock market the other the other week and she was curious about uh, how to buy and sell stocks and uh, when she was thinking about what stock to buy she decided to go uh, for netflix and the reason for that was uh, well in bad economic climates, uh, when the economy is bad, she figured that uh, she will rather stop buying milk before she cancels her, her yeah. Netflix su- subscription. Yeah. And I suppose that uh, iGaming is in kind of a similar situation yeah. to that. Yeah, that, that's very similar. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean, you've been in industry for a long time, Pontus, uh, even so far as uh, you've been going through the financial crisis in 2008 and obviously the IT bubble in the 2000s. Um, and also the IT crash in the, two th- in the year of 2000. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The and first one. The, the first, the original one. The yes. first one that we went through yeah. in the iGaming industry. As an industry. And uh, during these kind of three uh, potential recessions, uh, then have, you, um, have you noticed any patterns or any slowdown? Or, or has the industry always been doing well through these periods? Yeah, we have actually. We haven't noticed any change in behavior, even though we noticed big changes in the 
macro environment around us. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I think we can say that we are pretty resilient yeah. uh, from what we have seen so far. Right, right. Um, I mean, also, if we take the macro uh, climate in, in mind, I, I, I'm, something I'm curious about as well. I mean, we are both Swedish, right? And, and um, a, a new saying that has been born in Sweden over the last 10 years is uh, that saving is the, oh, sorry, loaning is the new saving. Uh, and Sweden is the most loaned country on earth on a personal uh, level. And so, uh, when the interest rates uh, start increasing in Sweden, it has uh, quite detrimental effects uh, to the general population. Now, um, the um, the effects of uh, of uh, rate increasing rates is uh, usually seen within 12 to 18 months, which means that mm. we haven't seen the changing in consumer behavior yet. Uh, presumably, is that something that worries you, uh, especially from a Swedish perspective? Yeah, I, th I think we will see effects from the r rates going up. So uh, it doesn't really worry me that much. Uh, but uh, I think we can expect some kind of turmoil in, in, in the market. And some people may have to change uh, where they live and how much they spend on that. And mm -hmm. so, so, so I, I think I think we will know more in 12 months time. Yeah, absolutely. And if you if you were to predict the future um, just from a macroeconomic climate, how do you think this will play out? This uh, uh, th this kind of financial crisis, if you will. Uh, that, that, that's very hard to say. Um, I, I I I'm not the kind of person that believes that the, the 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 everything will go down and you know <laughs> the, the world will go more or less bankruptcy and things like that, because I, I think that people have the ability to adopt. Yeah. Uh, and I think we will see that happen. Fair enough, fair enough. Just to uh, change uh, topic uh, here for a bit, uh, moving over to uh, responsible gambling for a little bit. Um, Kindred in 2020 um, set a this zero vision to try to eliminate uh, harmful gambling. Uh, or rather revenues from half on, half on gambling. Um, now, two years later, uh, one and a half years later, rather, um, they haven't been able to, uh, according to their own measurements, uh, lower the uh, revenue from harm from gambling. Um, do you think this is a realistic target? Like, uh, is it like even theoretically possible to eliminate uh, revenues from harmful gambling? And is this something you guys are thinking about at Betson as well? Yeah, we are thinking a lot about harmful gambling and responsible gaming and, th yes. and things like that, of, of course. Um, it's been something that we have been working with for almost 20 years. Uh, um, but we know that there are people that get into trouble uh, in gaming and it has been that forever. Also, it's it's the same bef before internet gaming was around. Then, then there was other gaming forms, and it was roughly the same um, share of players that went into problematic situations. So, you know, if if you should decide that you should have zero revenues from harmful gambling, which of course sounds good, nobody wants to have harmful mm. gambling, but but. Uh, we accept a, a big number of new clients every day. And we don't know out of these people, most likely, let's say 2% will get into trouble sooner or later, but it's, it's impossible to see that on the first day. So the only way to reach zero is to shut down more or less, yeah. uh, I believe. And then again, if you think about this a little bit more deeper, at Betson, we believe, you know, that uh, we know that there are people that go into problems with their gambling. A lot of them can be helped, and we help a lot of people. We offer uh, limits, we, we timeouts, and, and and all that. So, saying that we should have zero is a little bit weird because that means that these people will have to be elsewhere, and if they end up outside of the regulation 
they end up in a not so good place. Hmm. So I think it's like a, a hospital saying that, you know, we don't want to have any clients that die. That, that's that's a good vision. But then, yeah. then you can't accept the clients that really, really need help. <laughs> so, so, so we believe more in uh, working with people that go in, uh, show signs of problematic gambling, and try to help them out. Right. It's. Uh, I think that makes total sense, and it seems to be a quite sober way to uh, to look at the uh, the issue. Yeah. And I suppose as well the uh, the problem with aspiring for zero harmful gambling as well is that you will also have um, false positives. So mm. um, the, the, the more strict you are with kind of shutting accounts down, the more you mean that you you will also so limit accounts that are not. Yeah. Uh, harmful gambling because yeah. again that's a problem as well uh you know the, the like uh, how much interference should you as an operator have on uh, on these accounts like, yeah i suppose uh the uh, what kinder is is trying to do is uh it's a quite noble mission after all and i, I suppose that um from an esg perspective um they would like to uh pursue a strategy that is uh esg friendly essentially this is a big problem in the industry from an investment point of view, right? Is that uh, especially in Sweden, where you're listed mm -hmm. at pension funds and so on, have kind of turned their back against the industry. Do you think that uh, there is any chance for the industry and its players to actually become ESG friendly? Of course, and uh, I, I think the companies uh, like Betson and similar, we are all working a lot to be ESG friendly and I actually think that we are ESG friendly as a company okay. mm. already but, 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 um, we're getting better and better in all yeah. different matters uh, we are uh, not only climate neutral we're climate uh, positive in, in the way yes. that we compensate more than we uh, th than we actually need yeah. to, to be on a zero level um, so I, I think this is an industry which is uh, it, it's legal it's licensed yes. it's controlled so we should be we are esg friendly already in my view then maybe the pension funds hasn't come to that conclusion yet <laughs> but i think it will happen it's it's kind of like uh, the the strides that the, you and the other uh, reputable operators are doing today it sometimes feels like um, there's a bit of a lag yeah. Uh, between these uh, decisions that you're taking and uh, kind of the general public understanding where the industry is today because obviously you are almost regulated like a bank to some extent yeah. like the, the the tough KYC checks that is needed and so on maybe the pension funds uh, they don't understand this today but eventually they they will yeah that is what we're hoping for yeah <laughs> Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, Pontus, uh, just to kind of jump uh, over the pond uh, for a bit, um, over to the uh, giant market of the United States. I suppose uh, a couple of years ago when PASPA was repealed in the United States, which, uh, which opened the doors to online sports betting in the US, a lot of European operators were quick to uh, take the opportunity to uh, kind of uh, commit themselves to uh, um, expand into the US market. However, at that time, you decided to not uh, pursue a, strat a B2C strategy in the US, uh, but rather you launched the, the, the B2B sports betting product. Um, I suppose at that time, this was a quite uh, controversial decision. And um, uh, I believe that you were quite criticized uh, to some extent uh, for not uh, uh, pursuing this um, exciting opportunity at that time. But I, I think we can agree that now, uh, in hindsight, this was the right decision. Uh, no operator is profitable in the US uh, as of yet. And um, one player has a lion's share of the total market share in that uh, market. Uh, can you talk a little bit more? Because this was a brave decision that you take yeah. that you took at that time. Um, can you talk about like, um, as a publicly traded company, there must have been a lot of pressure from shareholders to jump on this opportunity or there must have been a lot of voices uh, that were uh, begging you to uh, to kind of go for this opportunity. How did you uh, come to this conclusion back then and how was the pressure? Uh, yeah, uh, 
we did the analysis that uh, first of all US is not one single market it's, it's a bunch of different markets mm -hmm. with different regulations so uh, it, it will be costly to enter into all these markets because you will have to adopt to several regulatory frameworks and then we could see you know the the, the marketing spend that they were doing initially and the cost of acquiring customers that that was expensive <laughs> and Betson is a company that has a tradition of being profitable and giving dividend to the shareholders we've been with that for a very very long time and uh, we wanted to continue to do that so so we saw that you know if we're going to go in there and go for a meaningful market share in in several uh, jurisdictions in the US we will not be profitable for a very long time and we didn't want to to take that route so, so and and actually many people said that oh you're you're missing the opportunity you're missing the train and, and we right. said that we believe that there will be more trains coming <laughs> more opportunities because uh, the market is not fixed there will be new states coming up there will be some companies running into trouble things will happen so we'll see what happens in the future and at the same time we saw a lot of other markets where we saw great opportunities and uh, and, and you know, faster ways to profitability. So we went for those markets instead. Interesting. And uh, instead, of course, uh, so far you have uh, launched in the US uh, with your B2B product, uh, the, the sport betting uh, platform. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, to, to my knowledge, uh, you haven't been able to uh, sell this product to any clients as of yet. Um, is this a disappointment? If I could choose, I would rather have sold it to ten clients than 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 none. But but uh, we launched the product in the first quarter this year uh, on the on the, in the Colorado B two C market where we operate ourselves. And when we launched it, it, it was like the very first version. And of course, we need to. Uh, even though it was a good product already from start, there are things to to be done. You know to adopt it even further to the market. So I didn't expect, you know, that we should finalize any deal very short after the release because uh, the, the product was new, it's, it needs to be tested and, and proven and, and verified. And then again, the sales cycles for these kind of products, uh, is, is, they are quite long. So, so uh, I, I think we are on track with, with the project uh, anyway. Right. Is, uh, have you given any guidance on uh, what to expect from... No, we haven't. No, and so it's uh, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, what about uh, going forward in the US? Do you think at some point, uh, obviously you are alive with the BetSafe brand in Colorado today, but it's more as a kind of demonstration what yeah. uh, Sportsbook can do. But do you think that uh, there will be a time where Betson will... Um, give a serious push in one or several of the states in the US on a B2C? It's, uh, it's not something that we are planning on right now. Then again, we are opportunity driven. So if, if, if we get the right opportunity and if we are positioned in the right way to, to take that opportunity, then we could definitely uh, think about it. But it's it, it's a moving target and the, the market is under development still and and we will see what happens absolutely moving back to uh, to europe again um the last few years have been tough in many of the jurisdictions in in uh, europe from a regulatory point of view um regulators are uh, seemingly over regulating some of the markets um and uh, what's taking place in Germany, for example, is that uh, most of the um, uh, activity is happening on offshore uh, operators. And uh, I heard an estimation recently that uh, the channelization rate is only 20% in Germany, meaning that uh, of all the gam online gambling activity that is taking place, only 20% uh, of that activity is within the regulated environment and 80% is uh, within offshore uh, companies. Um, I want to ask you as well, because I know that uh, Betson, as far as I know, have uh, mostly withdrawn from the German markets. 
what's your expectations say specifically for germany right now when it seems to be almost impossible to find profitability with the uh, with the high taxation the deposit limits and so on mm. what do you think about the german market to the, today and seemingly the regulation has totally failed and at some point you would think that the regulators would understand that what they are doing is obviously not gaining anyone mm. except for the uh, offshore players mm. yeah the market is uh, in a way uh, destroyed you, you can say that because if you have a channelization on around 20 percent which sounds you know possible mm. Then, then it's a failure. For whatever you, reason you decided to regulate, even either it's for tax reasons you want to tax it, or it's for control reasons you want to control the market and you know have responsible companies running the market to protect the consumers. But if you protect twenty percent only, then and and the other ones are playing an offshore. Uh, sites where they have uh, no limits on, on anything mm. th- th- then it's a big failure and you have to ask yourself in in what other kind of regulation would you accept to have like a coverage of only 20 percent mm. like if if cars were speed over speeding eight out of ten cars was doing twice as much as, as you're allowed to drive or only 20% were paying their taxes and 80% didn't pay any tax, then the regulator would act. Mm. So I think, you know, logically, you should expect that uh, it should be changes in this. Yeah. And uh, looking at Sweden, then, for example, there was um, recently the election and the, uh, a shift in government. Um, do you have any expectation as of yet uh, how the, the new government in Sweden will communicate with uh, the agami industry is there anything uh, that uh, what's, what's your feeling in general do you think that uh, we'll be able to get closer to the regulator or is uh, is it going to become more difficult for the industry i don't think it will become more difficult uh, i think for the new government they have bigger issues to deal with than the gaming regulation <laughs> right now so uh, <laughs> i think we are you know not uh, top of mind for for yeah. the new government but uh, i i think uh, the shift is not bad for the industry yes. i don't think it will have uh, any big impact uh, immediately but it, i think it was good for the long run and uh, then again, Swedish gaming regulation is working pretty well. So uh, uh, that could serve as a model for Germany, as an example. Yeah, interesting. Mm. Um, and uh, another question as well on the Netherlands market. Uh, I could see in the, uh, in the latest quarterly report, you talked about uh, that you are still not live in the Netherlands. Um, However, many other operators have been able to get their license and they have kind of kickstart, like restarted uh, the, the market. Um, why is it uh, that you haven't gotten a license there yet? And when do you expect to be live in the ne- Netherlands? Yeah, there is this cooling off period, you know, that uh, right. and uh, we had to make uh, changes to our sites that, that we operated that accepted Dutch players and the changes we made took some more time to implement uh, so so we are actually behind the other companies in in in, in that uh, run for the for the license so um, but we are in the process and uh, i think we will get the license soon uh, then again we will come to a market which is very different from what it was before and we'll, we'll see how crowded it is, but we have some good brands with good brand equity, so so uh, it's going to be exciting. Fair enough, fair enough. And last question for you, Pontus. So um, I used to work at Betson uh, back in 2011 and 2012. Yeah, you shouldn't have stopped. I, I, I know, I know. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm open for uh, for opportunities there, but. Uh, <coughs> Uh, it was it was a great time back back then. It was very it, um, it was there was a lot of turmoil at that time because Betson and Betsafe had just merged and and there was a hectic environment. But it was fantastic uh, at that time. As a as a young professional, um, I was uh, a poker VIP manager in the uh, in the Betsafe brand at that time, and I always used to look up to the uh, to the C level team at uh, Betson and and think like. 
uh, how do I like aspire to get to that level? It's it felt like there was almost like uh, uh, a very difficult bridge to cross to even think about becoming a sea level. I, I didn't grasp on how to like move my career to get there. It felt like sometimes that the sea levels were kind of um, brought up and raised to become sea level mm -hmm. since they were like 10 years old and, and I am different from them or something. But I've learned that everyone is a human being since then. Um, and so I just want to ask you as well, Pontus, um, what message uh, do you have to your young employees of today at Betson who might be ambitious and who want to aspire to one day become the next uh, generation uh, Pontus Lindvall? Yeah. First of all, we have a very high level of uh, when we have new positions uh, at Betson, we're really good at finding people internally. So there are great career ways mm. to, to move up uh, in, in, the, in the organization and the we have people in in the c level group that started in in support and and went all the way up you know to to being in 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 the management team so so that's definitely doable and it, it all boils down to what kind of personality you are how ambitious you are everything is possible and i think these people can can uh, tell you that and absolutely. confirm that yes absolutely William Pontus, thank you so much for um, giving me your valuable time today. It's always a pleasure to uh, to speak to you and, and, and I'm very happy to see Betson uh, doing as well as they are doing today. Okay, likewise. Thank you. Thank you.